Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bosch. The number of clean diesel models in North America will double by 2014. Bosch Clean Diesel. Good. Clean. Fun. Bridgestone. Your journey. Our passion. Dow Automotive Systems. Improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. And by the 2013 Hyundai Sonata. Learn more at HyundaiSonata.com. Hello and welcome to a new week of keeping track of all the fascinating developments in the global automotive industry. And here are the latest of them all. Volkswagen has very publicly bragged that it's going to be the biggest car company in the world by 2018. But unfortunately, at least one automotive analyst believes it is going to come up short. Jeff Schuster, the head of forecasting for LMC Automotive, says that Toyota will be number one in the world in 2019, followed by VW. Renault Nissan will take third place and General Motors drops to fourth. Hyundai Kia comes next, followed by Ford, Fiat Chrysler, and Honda. Interestingly, Suzuki Maruti takes the ninth spot and PSA takes 10th. Schuster bases his prediction based on sales, manufacturing capacity, and future models. One reason why GM falls to fourth is that most analysts do not count sales of Wuling vehicles in China since GM is a minority partner in that venture. And the car market in China might be slowing down, but we thought we'd take a look at the top selling sedans in the market. Not surprisingly, the list is dominated by General Motors and Volkswagen. The Chevy Sale was the top selling sedan in July with over 23,000 vehicles sold. It was followed by the Hyundai Elantra, the Volkswagen Sagittar, the Buick Excel, and the Volkswagen Jetta. Hey, are the days of large luxury sedans numbered in the U.S.? Lexus seems to think so. At a media preview of the new LS, Mark Templin, the group vice president and general manager of Lexus in the U.S., told Ward's Auto, and I quote, There are some great cars in this segment, but over time, you're going to see this segment decrease. He says that baby boomers, which are the primary buyers of large luxury sedans, are choosing to downsize because they don't need the space. And poor fuel economy is also turning consumers away. Last year, Lexus sold just under 10,000 LSs in the U.S. Back in 1990, its best sales year ever, over 40,000 were sold. The Indy Light Series, which is the farm system to groom a new generation of IndyCar drivers, is going to get a new race car, and it could be the Delta Wing. Currently, the series uses a Dallara chassis that's been around for 10 years. There are a number of other constructors who are interested in building race cars for the series, but none would attract as much attention as the radically different Delta Wing. Nissan sponsored the Delta Wing at this year's 24 Hours of Le Mans, but no word yet if Nissan would be involved in the Indy Light series. Boy, there's big trouble on the horizon for automakers because young people are not buying cars like they used to. According to a study by R.L. Polk, 18 to 34 year olds accounted for 17% of new vehicle purchases in April of 2007. That's before the Great Recession hit, but now that's declined to just 11%. Financially hampered youngsters may be throttling back demand by as many as 2 million units annually. And are you ready for another distressing statistic? In 1983, 92% of 20 to 24 year olds had driver's licenses. In 2010, it was only 81%. Contract negotiations between the Canadian Auto Workers Union and the Big Three kick off this week. According to the Detroit Free Press, GM, Ford and Chrysler want more concessions, but the CAW has two important trump cards. For the first time in a long time, North American profits at each of the automakers are strong. And beyond this important fact, none of them have taken very much away from workers in Europe where the situation's turning into a bloodbath. But with the loony at parity with the U.S. dollar, manufacturing is more expensive than ever in Canada, and that's going to work against the CAW in these negotiations. It's been out of the market for the last six years, but after the break, We'll give you the first sneak peek at the John Cooper's Works GP edition, and very few of them will actually be built. 
Dow Automotive Systems, driving solutions in automotive, commercial transportation, and aftermarket with innovative products like Betamate structural adhesives. Lighter, stronger, safer. DowBetamate.com. The GP Edition is a very special version of the John Cooper's Works Mini, and we were able to get a look at the car and the most important highlights of it before it officially debuts at next month's Paris Auto Show. Hi, I'm Patrick McKenna. I'm the product planning manager from Mini USA, and I'm here in front of the new Mini John Cooper Works GP. The GP came to uh, the US in 2006 for the first time, and it's now coming back at the end of uh, 2012 in production, available in early 2013. This is a very special car within the Mini family. It's the fastest Mini we have ever built. It ran the Nürburgring Nordschleife, the famous racetrack in Germany, 19 seconds faster than its predecessor. So it starts with uh, visually very aggressive uh, air dams in the front, uh, some skirts along the bottom that are uh, just beautiful uh, details, very aggressive look to it. Uh, clearly identified as the GP right here on the bonnet scoop, chili red, which is unique to the John Cooper Works model line. And this is a unique color that's only offered on the, the GP. So there's no other cars that will have that. When we come to the wheel design, this is a, a, a wheel design that's very similar to the car we offered in 2006. So this quad design really hasn't been used on any other uh, minis uh, in production. And we have massive, massive six piston brake calipers here. So we're talking about racing brakes, uh, racing setup for this. Uh, uh, sport tires, uh, suspension and engine setup uh, for the racetrack, even though it's street legal. We continue with the designation for GP along the side. The chili red accents here on the mirror uh, carry through as a John Cooper Works identification. Nice uh, aero package here as well. And this car will actually be fully revealed at the Paris Auto Show. Uh, later this year in September. Uh, this is, happens to be a test car, so we don't have the final interior. But this detail in the back is probably my favorite uh, element, and it's a rear diffuser. The complete underside of this vehicle uh, is covered, so we minimize drag. This Mini cuts through the wind very fast. As I said, this car was 19 seconds faster than its predecessor on the Nürburgring Nordschleife, so it's a very fast car. And we've got this uh, really nice uh, rear wing. Uh, there's some carbon fiber elements on this car as well. And we designate it here with GP. And this is a limited production car. So we're gonna be producing around 2,000 of these for the world. And about a quarter of those will come to the United States. And the 2006 GP customers are amongst our most passionate customers in the Mini family and they're probably the first ones in line for this car. So we're really excited to bring this to the U.S. early next year uh, for the first time in a six-year uh, hiatus for the GP. We think that car is going to be priced well above $40,000. Hey, don't miss this week's episode of Out of Line After Hours. We'll be down at the Woodward Avenue Dream Cruise, the world's largest public display of classic cars. Join me and the auto extremist Peter DeLorenzo for the best car talk in the business. And that's this Thursday night starting at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. And that wraps up today's report. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.